Every year, usually during our graduation ceremonies, UBC has the honor of bestowing honorary degrees upon individuals who, in the opinion of the university community, have fit the criteria of excellence and eminence in their chosen field. Victor J. Zhao exemplifies these characteristics, and it is our pleasure to grant him an honorary degree. Dr. Victor J. Zhao is one of the world's preeminent leaders in health and medicine and a trailblazer in translational research. He currently serves as the president of the National Academy of Medicine in the USA and is vice chair of the U.S. National Research Council. A graduate of McGill University's Faculty of Medicine, his accomplishments are both numerous and extraordinary, beginning with professorships and leadership appointments, including chairs of departments of medicine at Stanford and Harvard universities and chancellor for health affairs at Duke University. An internationally acclaimed scholar in the field of cardiovascular medicine and genetics, his seminal research created the science underlying the class of drugs commonly known as ACE inhibitors used to treat hypertension and heart failure, saving millions of lives worldwide. He also pioneered gene therapy for vascular disease and was the first to introduce DNA decoy molecules in humans. His pioneering research in heart regeneration led to the paracrine hypothesis of stem cell action and his recent strategy of direct reprogramming using microRNA. As a leader in global health, he has worked tirelessly to develop and engage with major global health initiatives, including the Global Health Risk Framework and the Human Genome Editing Initiative. Most recently, he has provided global leadership in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic as a member of the Global Preparedness Monitoring Board, co-chair of the G20 High-Level Scientific Panel on Global Health Security, and a principal of the ACT Accelerator, which includes COVAX, the global collaboration for accelerating the development, manufacturing, and equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Zhao played a key role in initiating the coronavirus Global Response Pledging Event, led by the European Commission, which raised a total of almost $18 billion. In recognition of his extraordinary scientific achievements and his exemplary leadership in global health, we are pleased to confer the degree Doctor of Science honoris causa upon Dr. Victor Joseph Zhao. It now gives me great pleasure to ask Dr. Zhao to say a few words. Chancellor Point, President Ono, and members of the UBC community, what an honor it is to be receiving an honorary doctorate from UBC, a world-class university which I greatly admire and respect. And congratulations to all this year's graduates and to your families too. Receiving this honorary degree in science is especially meaningful to me since for centuries, science has been such a crucial instrument for improving health and creating prosperity. And that is more true today than ever before. I've dedicated my career to advancing science to improve people's lives. For me, that has meant employing science to treat disease, but also to help tackle global health challenges and inequities. I've been very fortunate to have the opportunity to work at the intersection of science and medicine and societal challenges. Early in my career, my great interest was in discovering treatments for heart disease. I was fortunate to contribute to science underlying the class of life-saving drugs, commonly known as ACE inhibitors, to treat hypertension and heart failure. My current research is to develop molecular methods to regenerate heart muscle after damage. You see, the human heart is incapable of regenerating dead muscle after damage, such as a heart attack. But you know, my interest in discovering new knowledge led me to pursue a career in science, but it was the application of the science to benefit humanity 
that has been my North Star and guiding principle. Like me, I think many people in science and medicine entered these fields because they deeply invested in helping others. Indeed, science offered tremendous promise to improve the lives of others. As Hippocrates said, wherever the art of medicine or science is loved, there's also love of humanity. My intense interest in medicine has been very much influenced by my early childhood experience. I grew up in post-war China and Hong Kong, where I witnessed poverty, inequality, suffering, and illness. So ever since I was a young child, I wanted to be a physician, to tend to the sick and underprivileged. Consequently, I've dedicated my career to addressing global health and social inequities. You know, over the years, I've been engaged with many activities to confront some of the most pressing health problems. But this year has really been like one like no other. As you heard from President Ono, I've been greatly involved with the US in global efforts to tackle COVID-19 crisis. As you know, the world hasn't experienced a pandemic like this in 100 years. Almost every aspect of, of our society has been profoundly affected, from health, the economy, to education, to the very social fabric that holds us together. This pandemic has starkly illustrated long-standing failings and inequities in our health and social systems. But it's also brought together a convergence of science and humanity like no other in our lifetimes. If there is one silver lining from this past year, it is that millions around the world have gained a new appreciation for the value of science and medicine. Effective response to COVID are based on science. Tackling infectious disease outbreak requires a comprehensive response spanning detection, surveillance, sequencing, public health measures, and more. All these are based on science. It is truly remarkable to see the speed with which we now have effective vaccines which usually takes several years to develop. You know, it only took a mere 69 days from sequencing of the virus to develop vaccines to be tested. 15 weeks to finish phase one clinical trial, 11 weeks to phase two, and 10 months from the initial concept to obtaining definitive phase three results. You know, but this astounding accomplishment would not have been possible without the foundation of decades of investment in painstaking basic research. COVID also highlights the fragility of global systems and how failure to develop decisions and policies based on science can result in chaos and devastation many countries have experienced. In crisis, events happen quickly, and science doesn't have all the answers immediately, certainly not at the outset. This is why we have to have long-term investment in basic curiosity-driven science, which paves the way for breakthrough discoveries and future developments that would allow us to quickly find solutions to emerging challenges. Science offers tremendous promise to improve the lives of others, from improving health outcomes to tackling large-scale problems as it relates to poverty, climate change, famine, and more. Science will be critically important in tackling these existential threats. Take climate change, for example. Science can help identify new tools and strategies to limit the magnitude of climate change or adapt to its impact. New technologies and development of alternate energy sources can greatly curb greenhouse gas emissions. And science can reduce the impact of climate change on human health and equity. The impacts of climate change are almost are most severe for the poorest and disadvantaged. In fact, climate change is a public health crisis associated with 20 million deaths a year globally. At my institution, the US National Academy of Medicine, we have launched a grand challenge on climate change and human health and equity to mobilize health and biomedical science communities for collective action, research, innovation. Our aim is to comprehensively address the health risk of climate change 
and develop strategies to address both drivers and impacts. So you can see science holds such promise for tackling these challenges as its range of possibilities is vast. But as those of us in science and medicine have learned, especially during this pandemic, it's not enough to simply do the work. We must also assure that science and evidence are informing the public, shaping policy, and individual decision making. We must speak the truth based on data and evidence, even when some people just don't want to hear it. And we must maintain the high standard of scientific integrity. Ending the pandemic and fighting climate change will be the defining issues of our lifetime. Every one of us have a critical role to play. We cannot afford to be complacent. We must all do our part in collective action, advance solutions to these complex challenges. So throughout my career, my journey has taken me from basic research to global health arena. Throughout all this, I've come away with three key lessons. One, translate science for the good of humanity. Two, work to improve science globally and reduce inequity. And three, engage in collective action. We must all do our part, and together we can make a difference. Today, we have much to celebrate and much to be hopeful about. Without a doubt, this year has taught us the power of science, medicine, and humanity. These are our instruments for the greater good. We must be ready to use them to create a healthier, more equitable, and more sustained future for all of us. Thank you very much. I would like to tell the students that one, find a purpose in your life, your North Star, which guides you to do things that you want to do and why. And as you find that purpose, go after it with great passion and energy. Many people ask me, what about this career of yours? You did this, you did that. I tell them, look, I never planned my career, and I think it's a mistake to engineer and plan your career. What you want to do is find the right thing to do, follow your passion, and I think doors will open to you, and those doors will allow you to walk through this and follow what you believe is the right thing to do, and new doors will open. And that's how, in fact, many of us, uh, certainly at my stage, find uh, our lives, you know, uh, work and career, and your personal life as well. 